Welcome to episode 58 of the Twig Snapper podcast. Today I'm joined by Alexis Thomas of the Salem State women's hockey team. How are you? Good, how are you? I'm good. Thanks for joining me. Um, I figured we could start off with probably the biggest thing that's happened in your hockey career, especially at Salem State, and that'd be the the playoff overtime winner against Plymouth State last year. Um, obviously a huge achievement for your program and for you and for everything. So let's start just by talking about that game in general um, and the battle leading to overtime. Yeah, so that game was – we going into it, we knew that was going to be a very big game. Um, we knew we had to win that game to obviously move on. And we've never played in a playoff game and we've never advanced before. And um, so we kind of had our hearts set. This is do or die. And I personally know I wanted to go out there and give everything. And obviously it wasn't going to be easy. Um, Plymouth and Salem were kind of equal and we they've always been like kind of better than us or that's what they've known to be. And um, we wanted to obviously switch the odds this game. This was going to be the game that the Vikings come out on top. That was my mindset going into the game, that nothing's going to let – nothing's going to stop me from doing this. Nothing's going to stop this team from doing this, and we are one. And so basically it was a big battle, <laughs> big battle, um, obviously OT. Um, I was actually very – very gassed. I hope my coach is probably going to listen to this, but I was gassed at, yep, that moment in time where I did score the goal. Um, it, we were on a penalty kill. Um, I was out with my partner, Mackenzie Mallet, uh, my forward partner. Um, and so before I even took that, before that face off even happened um, in our end, obviously, I actually went in for a change because I was already stuck out there for two minutes because I had already skated down with the puck trying to score. And I look at the bench and I was like, I need a change. And both the coaches were like, no. <laughs> and so I ended up staying out there. Um, so I was like, all right, I got to suck it up. So I did take my time going back to the face off circle. I was like, all right, I got to catch my breath. And I had my best friend in net, um, Kaya Hollingsworth, um, she played phenomenal that game and I look at her and she looks at me and we kind of gave each other eye contact and we both knew like we know what we got to do we know what we got to do we both shook our head like we got this um and I said I'm going to kill this for you I said this is going to be for you this game is for you because she played out of her mind that game and I wanted this game to be obviously to make history so once I saw the puck go out to their defenseman on my side I noticed she had her head down, um, so I said, you know what, I'm going to take this risk. Um, if I get beat, she's probably going to shoot it because she is also – I noticed she was also out there for two-plus minutes, so she was already gassed, so I know she didn't have as much more energy as I did. So I said, I'm going to try to poke check, and if I get beat, she's probably going to shoot it right away, and she's Kai's going to save it, or I'm going to go right down. And <laughs> so obviously I stepped to her. I took the puck off her stick, and I said, all right, I'm off. I'm off to the races. I picked my head up. I saw the goalie. The goalie didn't move. So I kind of, I obviously went blocker side and, and cause I'm a lefty and it went right in and I was like, Oh my God. And my team came over and I was out of breath. I couldn't even get up off the ice. And I, I was like kind of in a shock cause I was obviously very gassed and, and I was like, Oh my God, we just, we just made history. And then and then um, all the girls were like, we just, we just won. Like, and I was like, and, and then it hit me once we got into the, uh, like into the locker room and everything, like, holy crap, we just made women's hockey history here at Salem State. And, and with all the adversity that we have faced that season too, uh, obviously coming, it was a year after COVID season where we didn't get to play. There was nothing more rewarding to me as a program and to do it with the girls I've obviously been with like like with the seniors now that have been with me for that whole time I was like this is this is what it's all about this is going through the hardships working your butt off day in and day out like you have those two hour practices every day um and it's like it's obviously worked for something and it kind of felt like it was it was honestly an award to me and it felt like we didn't win a championship, but in my book, we won one of, one of the many championships that I wanted to win for us as a team. So that was pretty great to experience. Yeah. I mean, many first, like you said, you hadn't, you hadn't won a playoff game. You hadn't been there. You guys get there, you win it in exciting fashion. You know, it wasn't just a regular old goal. It was a breakaway 
So th that in itself makes it so much more exciting. And then you said, you know, it makes it worth it in the end, you know, all that work you put in. It also makes that, you know, being gassed when you looked at your coaches and they're like, no, stay out there. You know, you're that gassed and then you get rewarded. It makes it makes yeah. it worth it. Obviously, like you, you said, you saw the goalie didn't didn't move. So you kind of knew your shot. But it's not like you have a lot of time to think about it either. Like everything happens so fast. I mean, that had to have been like a 10 seconds of, of time from when you got the puck to going down there and scoring and then, you know, realizing you had won the game. <clears throat> yeah. Just like a, a whirlwind of moments. Uh, you know, you know, it all happened so fast. It's got to be a little fuzzy in memory sometimes because like, like you said, you're in shock. And then once you get to the locker room, kind of kind of hits you it's too bad that you can't you know in those moments that shock kind of takes some of it away and then you don't realize it till later but obviously an incredible moment now you're in the history books at salem state yep <laughs> um so talk about what do, you, what do you think that game like does for your program moving forward the future of salem state hockey i mean obviously it's a it's a big stepping stone you guys you know put that next block in the steps yeah, I think it definitely it sets the tone for further teams. Like obviously in the past, like I feel I can't speak for other teams, but I have a feeling like we do get underestimated a lot as a team. Um, and obviously our our past records, obviously like my freshman year and like seasons before, our records don't show the team that we are. Um, and I think when teams look at that, oh, well, we're just going to go and kill them. Um, well, no, you're not, because we just we just beat Plymouth. We just, we just won our first playoff game, um, and we're only going to get better from here. And I think a lot of teams ended up, like, they underestimate us, and I think that kind of set a tone for, like, we just finished um, my senior season, and obviously some teams I could tell were like, okay, like, they did win their playoff game and we actually beat Plymouth this year too. Um, so I also think, um, yeah, I think it did set a big tone for the season and it's also, it sets a tone to Salem state as well. Like, Oh my God. Like, cause we, our program was so new. Um, I think we're in the fifth or sixth year, I believe. And that also sets a tone like for the amount of years that we've been established and we've, for, and we make history like within the first, let's say, 10 years, I think that's a pretty great accomplishment for a program to be that established for that amount of time and to make that little milestone or that big milestone in my in my book, I think. Um, and I think that's pretty cool. Um, but I also think that teams stopped underestimating us, and it was really obvious this past season. So I think that was yeah. pretty cool too, that we kind yeah. of set that tone. Teams can't look at you anymore and just say, we're going to go in there and we're going to smoke these, you know, they're, they've they got to take you guys seriously. And you, and you proved that. I mean, they always should have taken you seriously. You know, you can't, it's college hockey. You can't really underestimate anyone ever, but teams still do it. Now they have no reason to underestimate you at all. Um, and that is impressive. Like you said, you know, within the first 10 years, it's hard to build a program from nothing, especially against teams that have a history. They have a culture, they have a program built, Obviously, there's some colleges that have been around longer than 10 years that have not accomplished what you guys accomplished. So to do it in that short amount of time is another, um, you know, just thing in the history books that people are going to look back in however many years and say that, you know, these teams are, they're the reason we are where we are now, um, exactly. which, is, which has got to be pretty exciting for you guys to know that you're, you're part of something special in the history of, of Salem State women's hockey. Um so yeah, just talk about your time, you know, over these couple of years. Why why did you choose Salem State, and you know, are you happy with your choice? I'm, I'm guessing yes, based on the, you know, the emotion that you've talked about the team with so far. Yeah. So 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 far, obviously, coming from my freshman year, um, freshman year was awesome for me. Um, I mean, I didn't get a lot of playing time because obviously I was a freshman, um, but I had a great group of leadership ahead of me, and they really set the tone of what I wanted to be going forward, being on this team. And I think the captains really did a great job of, um, of setting that dynamic in that culture for, for us as freshmen. I, I feel like my freshman year, 
Um, and I looked up to them a great amount. I was always with the upperclassmen. Um, so that's kind of what, so that was like freshman year. And then sophomore year was hard. Um, COVID year, we didn't get a season, obviously, but that's all right. I still got to be around the team, and that's what mattered to me the most. I still got to practice with the team. In junior year, obviously, great year last year. Um, that was definitely my favorite season so far, and I think um, it's only going to get better. And, like, this year we made another big milestone. Obviously, we had a coaching change, but that didn't change really any of um, my perspective on the team. I still – I loved it. I had a great season, I think, and – we're still going to continue to get better. And obviously I am doing a fifth year, um, but that is also because of my major. I am a pre-rehab major in physical therapy. So I do have to go to grad school. And so I have to finish my prerequisite courses in order to get into grad school. So that's why I'm also choosing to do the fifth year at Salem State. And I think Salem State as a college itself is really great. I think the location, that's what made me um, kind of, when it came down to the, to like the, like the nitty gritty, it was the rink on campus. It was the location. It was right by Boston. I could go 25 minutes in and catch a Bruins game and take the tea in and all. And I actually played on a team called the North Suburban Wings, which was, um, I played there for my club team for the fall. So I actually went to boarding school for four years. So I played on the club team my senior year in high school. And I played with some of the girls that I play with now in college. And that kind of also determine the factor of me going to Salem as well. So I had people I know going in and, and I think that's what also made, makes the dynamic so great is that we have been with each other for um, some of us have been with each other for more than four years now, because we played together with each other for more than four years. And I think that, I think that was really cool. I feel like it's not a lot, like not a lot, a lot of college teams can say um, that they have like five or six girls that play with each other for two years plus before coming in together. So I think that was, I think that kind of made me determine Salem state. And when you've got that, you know, that kind of like tight group of girls or, or, you know, guys, whatever, you know, whatever kind of a team it is, you can't really break that chemistry and that like cohesive bond. And that's almost sometimes more helpful than pure talent itself. When you have that team bond, you know, it can help with so much. So, you know, who knows what you guys can do next year you know, going in and, and now you're one of those leaders that you said you used to look up to when you were a freshman. Um, so yeah, it should be exciting next year. Do you have any specific goals personally for your fifth year and final year? I want to make the second round of playoffs. I don't want to make just the first round and win. I want to also go past my expectations and go the second round. Um, and I want to be a nationally ranked team. Obviously, um, it they're nationally ranked um, and they're more um, they're more established, but that doesn't scare me. That doesn't stop me at all. And I think when you go into especially big games like that, when you play a nationally ranked team like Elmira, like Norwich, you have to think of anything can happen, um, and you have to be mentally optimistic because anything can happen. It's hockey. You've seen it in the in the pros. You've seen it in Division One. You've seen it everywhere. Like you like you have to stay optimistic and i think that it can be done and i strongly and firmly believe everyone on my team when going around and like looking in my locker room i can tell you that i believe in every single person on that team that we are more than capable of beating a nationally ranked team and that's one of the, my big goals for next season exciting 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 stuff all right let's let's switch gears here a little bit um I was uh, reading your bios throughout time from freshman to now, (laughs) and I noticed a few things stayed the same, but a few things changed. Like you were a Bruins fan, and now it says something about Golden Knights. Yeah. So (laughs) you you jumped on the Golden Knights bandwagon. Yeah. So honestly, I... I'm going to get so much controversy for this, but I like Bruce, I like Bruce Cassie as a coach. I mean, he probably didn't fit well with the Bruins, which is understandable, but um, there is, I also, so I like him as a coach, but I also fun fact about me. I went to Vegas to go out to coach um, because I coached for the Boston junior Bruins as well. Um, And um, so that actually kind of convinced me to kind of switch over gears because I always kind of wanted to be, a Vegas fan in a way, and I never got to go to a game. I still haven't gone, but um, I've, I've actually seen them practice before, and I got to, like, meet some of the players before, and I thought that was pretty cool. And 
Um, I think mainly the, when Bruce Cassidy went to Vegas, I was like, yeah, I'm kind of going to be a Knights fan now. So I've just been following them more than the Bruins this past season. I don't know. So you have a you have a real reason though. You didn't just switch because they're a new team and they are like you know they're doing good. You have a real reason when people ask you why did you switch. Oh yeah, there's, <laughs> there's a legit reason which helps. It's not ah they're just doing good. I wanted to root for somebody different. I mean the uh, Bruins are also doing phenomenal, but I'm not. They like... are so you know it also makes it more you know if you were a fan of a bad team and then you started liking the Golden Knights, people might look at you and say ah they're just a bandwagon. But when the Bruins are having one of the best seasons in history, and then you decide to root for the Golden Knights, I honestly you know. well going into it. So we made these bios like in September, and I was like, well the Bruins, I don't know how they're gonna do with like, <laughs> usually with coaching changes. They're kind of like eh, they kind of go on a decline. So I, I'm like, I didn't expect them to be this good. I I didn't either, but uh, yeah. <laughs> I was listening to a lot of podcasts, you know, in the summer and free agency and all this stuff. And, you know, you'd be listening to chicklets or whatever, and they'd be talking about the Bruins and, you know, different people are going to be hurt in the beginning. And it was before Bergeron and decided to come back and all that. And, you know, how good are the Bruins going to be? Well, I think they've, you know, defied everyone's expectations they went way above and beyond what anyone expected and they're you know breaking records and they're really insane um as a golden knights fan what do you think about getting jonathan quick i think that was a great pickup honestly <laughs> yeah no he's a he's a good he kind of had his job taken away from him in la so there was really yeah no he kind of got stiff ended and i think that was kind of like he needed a way out. And I think yeah. the Golden Knights are like, all right, here's your way out. You're coming with us now. And it's like, I feel like he must feel relieved that he's probably going to get some sort of more, not more respect, but I think he's going to be more acknowledged at the Golden Knights. Yeah. It is a, it was an interesting like situation there. He's been a, 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 you know, a King for so long. And then for them to just kind of sweep him under the rug and yeah, I get Copley was playing really good, but it's still, like yeah. quick was he's been your guy forever you kind of just swept him out of the way and <laughs> yeah you i don't know do that's your go-to man for like the for how they've had him for so long for yeah you, and you copley really do that to like your go-to like well i and like that makes me feel like i wonder how patrick kane feels too Oh yeah, I know. I that. He he didn't want to he made it out like he didn't want to leave it all no matter how bad the Blackhawks got. Yeah, he I know. He made it out like he didn't want to be traded. Um but I guess that's business. Better to see him maybe have some success than be stuck on a crappy team. I know nobody from Chicago wants to hear that, but I guess if you're a Rangers fan, you love it. Yeah. <laughs> you got right. him and Tarasenko, that's <laughs> <laughs> They're going to be I I feel like they're going to be Dynamic duo. Now, you know, like maybe they are not, they weren't Bruins caliber all year long, but now I think they're definitely at that caliber. And they, they have to be. If they can't win with these new additions, then there's something wrong. Yeah. So, but that's going to be a good testament on them, though, to see how how they work with them, too, is like in the yeah. That's going to be interesting yeah. to see. It will be. It'll be fun. I think this is going to be a fun end of the season and playoffs and everything. I mean, it always is. Playoff hockey is so much better than regular season hockey. I agree. <laughs> I mean, the energy is so much more. Um, I interviewed this guy a while back who plays in the, in the coast, and he said, like, oh, yeah, I, I always thought I want to play at the energy level of playoff hockey year-round. And I think he said he tried to for a few games and he realized why nobody does because you can't go that hard year round like you do in playoffs. No matter what league you are, it's just yeah. you can't go that hard. People people turn up you know the level for playoffs, but you just burn yourself out, especially in pro hockey playing 70 plus games. There's no way you can do that. <laughs> I I know. <laughs> like, well, that's how. So, like, when I played, obviously, play like, we played our playoff game at Elmira, and obviously I was – you you had to turn it to, like, 100 different notches. You got to go – not plus 10, but you got to go up to 100, and it's like – it's like you got to put your body in full force mode. Like, all right, this is everything you got, everything you have right now. And, ima and I can't imagine, like, doing that for 10-plus games. It must be yeah. – 
I know, especially if you have to go through the full seven game series multiple times. Yeah, you know, and, like you gotta... and like the rest period isn't long. <laughs> like it's just not right. long enough for your body to recover. <laughs> no, it's crazy. It really is insane. You know, I mean, you see some guys who are like like Connor McDavid's probably one of the exceptions. He seems to be just insane all year, and then in yeah. the playoffs, other people. It's like, you know, you can tell they're human. He, he's he's almost not human the way he does it. It's, it's really right. insane. You see his highlights and like, man, that's just. <laughs> <laughs> One other thing I noticed that changed throughout your bio was your favorite TV show. Um, you said Grey's Anatomy and Shameless. Not going to lie. Never seen either of them. But then you also had Game of Thrones. Oh, <laughs> there's a reaction there. <laughs> <laughs> yep never seen Grey's Anatomy or Shameless but I have seen Game of Thrones love Game of Thrones uh this past summer I was living with a friend of mine we were working together and he was talking about it and I was like I, I've heard of it never watched it it can't be that good and he finally convinced me to try it and we ended up binging you know the series in a month I would spend our Saturdays watching like seven episodes just and it's <laughs> For anyone who's never seen Game of Thrones, I think you have to watch it. You, you have, have to watch it. It's so good. The first season's a little bit slow. I've watched that one more than once. And after yeah. seeing it a second time, I'm like, all right, it's a little slow. I feel like that's but... when people lose it. It was like halfway through season one, and it's like, oh, nothing's really happening. Well, just wait until season two, and then season three. Yeah. That's where it just all gets... of the action happens. Just it gets so much better. <laughs> yeah, you really, you really have to just – you know, wait it out. And, and honestly, I didn't think the last season was as bad as everyone said. I didn't like the way they, I think they rushed it, but like, yeah, that's, that's about it. It was just, if it was like one or two more episodes, to like just stretch it out a little bit longer instead of jamming everything in there. I, I can't say my true opinions on a few things. Cause I don't want to spoil it for anyone. Yeah. But um, who's your favorite character? Jon Snow. <laughs> oh, <laughs> That's that seems like kind of a cliche answer, John. I so. knew that I had a feeling you were gonna say that, but honestly, he he is very, very good looking. But I also <laughs> like how he plays the character of kind of like an underdog. I kind of admire that. He's really he's yeah. very fearless and he doesn't let anything stop him. And I admire that about him. And well, he's I, definitely a badass. I yeah. Can't deny that. Yeah. My answer is kind of cliche too, though. I'd probably have to like I'd have to say my favorite character is is Tyrion, which is also really cliche. <laughs> you I know? love him too. <laughs> but he's just hilarious. Although I do really like um, Samwell Tar Tarly and um, Bronn. Those those are, it's a tight three between those three. But, Not a bad three way tie. That's Sam. Reasonable. Sam just cracks me up. His, yeah. He's. <laughs> <laughs> there's uh there's a few specific scenes that i have in mind where he's he's just he's something else but yeah that is definitely a great tv show anyone who doesn't watch it you've got two people here telling you that you have to try it Please i don't know about it so i don't know about shameless HBO max right now and put it on your tv <laughs> yeah I don't know about shameless or gray's anatomy though i can't say anything about that if they're worth watching or not i don't know I think I'm just weird because I love like the medical setting. I love the human body. I mean, Grey's Anatomy. I love Grey's Anatomy. I love anything like with doctors in it. Um, McDreamy, McSteamy. I love. <laughs> I watched Grey's Anatomy about four times, and I just love the show. And Shameless. Oh my god, it's it's hilarious. All right, and the characters just played phenomenally they're just all portrayed phenomenally um yeah so but i'm not but you should you should try to watch shameless at least watch the first episode it's not bad i don't know uh, maybe <laughs> i don't know i don't know between that and i've got people telling me i need to watch outer banks and i, I, I never got into outer banks either. i haven't you know, either i don't know i, I just, just i watched two episodes and i was kind of like done i was like i don't I don't understand like like I like I understand it, but I feel like I'm watching like a Disney movie, like a Disney teenage <laughs> movie. And I was like, 
That's um, what I that's what I heard. It's like a more of a like a teeny bop kind of show, like teenagers, and that's what kind of just turned me away from wanting to try yeah, same, it. Yeah. And my other so, actually know. my other favorite two TV shows. Well, right now I'm watching The Last of Us and then I'm also watching um Narcos. I watch Narcos which is really good. That was a really good show. All right. Yeah. I've never watched either of those either. One of my other favorites, which if you like Game of Thrones, you might like it. It's it's similar except for the fact that like it doesn't have dragons and all kinds of stuff. It's Vikings. Vikings. I've been really told to watch that. I've actually oh. been recommended by like twenty <laughs> different people. I actually never got past season four because when I like was watching it, I was just so busy. But the first four seasons are just so good. I need to finish it someday. But yeah, the first four seasons are amazing. It's it's got that same kind of vibe. Except for the fact that there's no dragons and zombies <laughs> and stuff like that. <laughs> that that'd be the one biggest difference, I think. So you said you like medical shows. Have you watched like ER and some of those other ones too? Yeah, I've watched probably about one season of ER, and um, I forget what the show was called. I I briefly watched what was what was it like Chicago? Oh, oh yeah, you know there's this. Yeah, I forget there's the a couple name of those. It, I watched it briefly, but it it sounded like a like a cheap spinoff of Grey's Anatomy. So I was like, "This is like terrible. I can't watch this." So, yeah, I'm I'm kind of into that kind of stuff. So, medical shows. Yeah, I've only ever watched one medical show, and it's old and cheesy. It's from the '70s. It's called Emergency. It's I, I've it's, heard of it. It's mainly it's it's more based on like the paramedics, like the firefighters who are the paramedics. But I mean, there's the whole hospital side with the doctors. I don't know. I love that show. I like old shows. It's the seventies, you know, so it's pretty cheesy. But yeah. you know, if you're into that kind of thing, otherwise, <laughs> not a big medical show guy. Yep. <laughs> All right. So why don't we wrap it up here with some like quick rapid fire questions? Um, who's your favorite athlete? My favorite athlete, David Pasternak. Pasta. Who's your? What's your favorite food? Balsamic salmon with jasmine rice. Interesting. <laughs> if you had to play a sport other than hockey, what would it be? Um, lacrosse. Shield or a cage on your helmet, if you can pick. Shield. Favorite color blue not bad interesting i have to say the favorite food threw me for a loop there that was one i've never heard before usually people <laughs> that is just like my say, favorite meal that is like my go-to like even like to snack on like raw salmon i, I just get at the store and i just i don't know it's and it's really healthy i'm, I'm big i'm like i'm not like a health freak but i'm like it's really good with like healthy fats and obviously the protein and i also do love protein shakes which I make those probably twice a day. So that's probably, it's always a tie, like a protein bar, protein shake. So raw salmon, whatever. <laughs> I have good. to say, I, that's, a, that's an A plus answer, though. And the last couple of guests, I feel like sometimes they're like, oh, I don't know. I'll just say pizza. And I'm not dissing pizza. I love pizza too. <laughs> Everybody loves pizza. That's so, so basic. Like, no, it is. I, I actually it don't is. like pizza. I'm actually. What? Wow. Yeah. <laughs> That's a hot take. <laughs> yeah, I'm not I a mean, pizza girl. Wow. Not even if somebody puts salmon on it? <laughs> <laughs> no. I <laughs> that's That's got to be a thing somewhere. That's got to be a thing somewhere. Honestly, probably in Europe. I wouldn't doubt it. Somebody, if they hadn't thought of it, they will now after listening to this podcast. They're going to try it. Probably. It's going to be the new thing. Um, Probably. <laughs> you'll have to give us credit on that one. But <laughs> yeah, 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 I'm not a big fish guy. So like, I like the answer, though. It's unique, and it's, it's good. I'm going to throw one more in here. I asked somebody else this, and it's just kind of a fun one. Yeah. If you were at, I don't know, a party, a bar, wherever, with your team, you lose a bet and you have to go up to the karaoke machine. What song would you pick? You can pick any song you want, but you have to go up to that karaoke machine and sing for everyone in that bar or at that party. <laughs> uh, um, there are, <laughs> there's one song, but I can't say it on here. Why not? <laughs> 
It's an inside joke with the team. Um, well, just just say it. Whatever it is, it can't be that bad. Um, actually, honestly, I'll probably. Hmm. Probably what was the um. Rockstar by Nickelback. I I I can sing. Really? It. Yeah, I'll sing that. Yeah. I'll sing that. Or else you party in the USA by Miley Cyrus. Oh, that one's in it. Everyone can see that. Yeah. That's a generic one. Rockstar is pretty generic too, but it's a good song. I mean, I, I want to know what this so inside song with the team is, though. <laughs> no. well, why why can't you sing? <laughs> well, it's just a song. Somebody else. Well, it's, like, it. it's kind of like a funny song. It's not like necessarily within the team, but like some of us, like, I mean, I played it in the locker room. It's just, it's just funny. Like, well, like, what is it? For funsies. What is it? <laughs> I, 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 I don't it's even so know boring. what to, th what to think on, on what it could be. <laughs> you're not going to say, are you? No. <laughs> wow. Okay. I guess you're going to leave us and the rest of the world hanging on what the, uh, what the song is that the Salem State women's hockey team listens to in the locker room. I guess, I guess we'll never know. Um, it's a mystery forever. I had one more question, but I'm pretty sure I know the answer to it. What your favorite hockey memory is. I have a good guess that it's got to be that playoff win, unless it's something that happened before Salem State. Um. Well, that's actually tied with – so I went to nationals twice. I played for, so I'm originally from Cape Cod, Massachusetts. Um, I played for a team called the Cape Cod Storm. We went to nationals twice. Um, so we actually, I think it was the second time we ended up going to Lansing, Michigan to play. It was a tier two national um, championships. Anyways, to get there, we had to, um, we had to be obviously the top couple teams in Massachusetts, which are obviously it's always the Wizards and Asabit um, and the Eagles. And we ended up, I honestly forget who we played, um, but it but for this year, like they, like that year that we went to Michigan, um, it, we had to, I think it was the two teams that make the finals that end up going and we, uh, we made it to the finals and we knew after semifinals that we were going and there's this actually really horrifying uh, video of me on Twitter um, of me screaming coming out of the locker room that we were going to nationals. So, yeah, so that was, I was very ecstatic that we could go to nationals again. Cause we were, I think, yeah, we, I think we kind of were on the fence of like, kind of voted not to go like i feel like a lot of teams were like oh they're probably not going to make it to nationals and then we ended up going and we ended up honestly the first time we i went was in 2014 we went to amherst new york we actually played ass a bit i think it was was it the quarterfinals i think we played them in the quarters and we lost to ass a bit so it was funny because both massachusetts team end up playing each other in the playoffs at nationals <laughs> which was really funny so yeah. I thought that was pretty cool, but, but yeah, so I think it's tied with those two experiences because those were two once in a lifetime exper experiences that I got to obviously experience to obviously go to Amherst, New York and to Lansing, Michigan and have those experiences with my, with those teammates at the time. And most of those teammates I actually played against in college hockey. So that was kind of fun too. <laughs> yeah. And maybe you can add a few more things to the list next year if you guys beat a nationally ranked team or or you get those goals you accomplish, you can add a few more things to that memory list. Yeah, definitely. That's the goal. All right. Well, I think that's a good place to wrap it up. So for everyone listening, go get some raw fish and watch Game of Thrones. <laughs> and there's your weekend on what you can do to have a great Friday or Saturday night. Um, but thank you for joining me. It was a good time. Yeah, th thank you for having me.